The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Are you having conversations with clients about retirement? Are they asking how much money they'll need? Are they worried they'll run out? We're proud to introduce the new North Retirement Space on Ensemble, featuring Q&As with economists, webinars with product innovators, and unfettered access to retirement specialists to support your advice. Join the conversation today with North, a better way for retirement. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I've got the pleasure of speaking with Leanne Beely from uh, 2020 Wealth today. Leanne, thank you for joining me on, on what's ended up being really short notice, really. Really appreciate you making some time this afternoon to talk. No worries at all. Thank you, James. Thanks for inviting me along. That's all right. Now, I've, I've uh, you know, seen you on on Instagram for a, for a while now, and some of your some of your posts, and we've sent some messages backwards and forwards. But then you're um, you're on the uh, Financial Standard Power Fifty list for for the year. So congratulations for that. Was Thanks. was that your first year on there? Like, what's what's the, what's to go with that? It was my yeah. first year on there, so I was very um, honoured uh, to be alongside some amazing other advisors as well. I mean, there's some big names up there and big big boots to fill, I guess, alongside of. So, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Uh, very humbled. Uh, by yeah, being, good on you. you. And, 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 I, and I, the, the bit that I know of you is your, your social media uh, stuff, and we'll, we'll maybe get into that in a, in a minute. You've got a few few followers there on, on Instagram, but, but your, the, your business name, 2020 Wealth, uh, I did a bit of homework on on where the origins come from, but maybe you you kind of l- let us know where where the business name comes from. I, I think it's great from a play on words from a few different perspectives. But where does the name Twenty Twenty Wealth come from? Well, um, everybody asked me, you know, did you start the business in twenty twenty? And I did. So it was really it was the year when I guess everybody sort of looked at their finances and I, I guess assessed where they were at. So. Um, it was the year that I started out homeschooling, being in a little um, lounge room that I converted into an office and sort of everything was going on in there at the time. But it was more the plan words with the 2020 vision. So it was yeah. more sort of forward facing and looking to the future, regardless of, I guess, where we were at at that point in time. So, yeah. yeah. And so did you, it's, you mentioned the homeschooling where we were both in, in Victoria. So we've, we both had to deal with all of those lockdowns. It seems like such a distant memory. Did you... Did you launch your business before all of that happened or did you already have your kids at home doing homeschooling and you thought it was a good idea to start a business as well? Like how did that much, happen? Pretty much that's how it happened. So I was made redundant as a an, a, as an advisor for one of the banks uh, back in November of 2019. So I kind of um, hadn't really made my mind up when COVID hit what was the next move for me. So I was, yes, yeah, at home um, in a lockdown, uh, setting up, I guess, well, actually started the business. What made me start the business was I think all my beautiful clients that I used to look after that were all sort of contacting me via social media and different platforms and reaching out to me because I guess it was a time back then when everybody thought that the world was going to end and and there would be no more, I guess, superannuation and funds and everything was going to uh, fall in a heap. So yeah, I had a lot of reach out from people and I thought, oh, it's a time I guess when everybody, um, well, my clients needed me. So that's why I really started it, started the business. And yes, it happened in a in a room. Um, yes, organising myself and getting up and running whilst um, three kids were at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, it sounds nuts to talk about it, it now. Good. You know, it was we all lived it. We all lived it. Um, those of us down here in Melbourne. But to think about the thing about trying to start a small business in the middle of trying to homeschool three kids and the lockdowns and everything. I guess I guess you couldn't go anywhere else anyway. It's not like you had events and things to go to on the weekend. Not not much of a social life. So no, that's exactly right. Plenty of time. Yeah, and it's almost like a distant memory now as well. I find that you sort of get along back in life and you forget the pain. Yeah. So what what were you up to beforehand? So you said you were made redundant with the bank. Did was it one of the banks just got completely out of financial advice? What happened to all the clients? Did they just get 
get kind of let go in a sense or what happened with them? I worked for Commonwealth Financial Planning, which was part of the CBA. So uh, it was the second round of redundancies. I think a lot of the first round were and um, well, it was my sort of New South Wales advisors and this the second round was um, a lot of Victorian advisors. So yep. um, eventually they moved away from the advice business completely. So yeah, they just um, reduced the amount of advisors and the clients and yeah. yeah, it was pretty sad, really, that a lot yeah. of clients were left without for a while until they could source advisors external to yep. the bank. Yeah. Yep. Now, what's your What's a bit of your story into into advice? Like, how long were you with Commonwealth? Was that your first financial planning job? Like, what, what's the What's a bit of backstory there? Yeah. So <laughs> I started actually in, in the Commonwealth Bank as a teller back in the day. So I um, oh, yeah. moved out from the UK and um, got a a role in the CBA as a teller and kind of started, followed the branch planner around. So I used to um, follow the lady who was the the branch planner in our local branch around and just endlessly and sort of um, I would just be mesmerised at what she could do for clients. So she was my I guess role model and um, person that I aspired to be like. So I studied and worked hard and. Yes, it started out in my first role actually as a sir. Her, I was her service planner for a while, so she stepped into a senior planner role, and I worked alongside of her as her service planner. And then she stepped into an area manager role, and I stepped into a financial planner role. So we was kind of, you know, following each other, I guess, for a, a certain period of time there. So yeah. that's where I started out, and I, I really loved what I was doing. So um, it was only natural to sort of as take the big step and venture out into the big world on my own eventually. Have you have you kept in contact with her? Is she still got some yeah, type of role I, in financial advice as well? What She does. So she does, yeah, good on her. She's yeah. got a hand still in financial advice in a compliance role at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So everyone, everyone talks really fondly of their time in the banks. Like the banks got so beat up in the, you know during that Royal Commission and all the rest of it and it was you know, probably the, the trigger point for a lot of them to get out of financial advice. But but I've had I've had others on the podcast that you know, worked with Westpac or NZ or you know Europe Commonwealth. Everyone talks really fondly of their of their time at the banks and, and in particular the like the training and the nurturing that you got in 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 that. You know, it that we I think there's a few businesses now probably starting to find their feet around dealing with professional year and so forth. But we don't really have that that mass education piece that the that the banks provide do we anymore. It's, no, um, I agree. It's a totally much, agree. much tougher. And a, a lot of, you know, small business a lot of people like yourself gone out and, and started their own their own small business. So what what is your what does your business look like at the moment? Is it is it still just you? Have you got anyone working with you? What's what's the setup like? I've actually got my son who works for me. Um oh, so yeah. he's been working with me now for just coming up two years. So he's um in the background. He does a lot of uh, client support. Um, he does a lot of planning plans together as well now, which is awesome. So he's really, really good, really switched on. So it's kind of, it was a mum and son uh, venture for a while, which is good. So, but now we've got Gemma as well. So Gemma's now in front of house and reception and admin as well. So it's just, just growing and growing, which is amazing. So it's, that's fantastic. How, how old's your son? How old's he? He's 21 in May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But he's, yeah. he's doing well. And, and he saw what you were up to and, and wanted to be part of it. That's right. That's yeah, right. Good on him. So we'll um, venture out into the world of education and studies, I think, next year, and um, see what's next for him. I'm not so sure he'll stay with me long term. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if he finds his way back eventually. I reckon go go and do his thing, maybe but, we'll, but uh, maybe we we'll, might yeah. might come back. So who do you who do you work with at the at, at the moment? I, I I I picked up an interesting line in the financial standard in, in that kind of Power Fifty Awards that. It commented on you doing a bit of work with with uh, with single women during yes. during COVID. Uh, I'm, I'm just interested in what what does a typical client of yours look like, and who are you working with? I'm working with quite a varied range of clients, to be honest. So I've got I deal with a lot of retirees and sort of mums and dads, as a lot of us do in terms of retirement planning advice. I've got a lot of young clients as well, so a lot of people that are venturing out, I guess, in their first homes, uh, budgeting. Uh, just building, I guess, savings and portfolios as well for a long-term planning approach as well. Um, so I've yep. got a lot of young accumulators, individual singles and couples. Um, but I really threw myself into, I guess, being that advocate for single moms, women, um, through the 2020 period as well. I was in a few single moms groups on Facebook and as I've been a single mom as well for, for many years. I had three under 10, I think, at one stage. So it was it was quite hard to navigate, I guess, 
working um, and in an income, looking after children, balancing, going through a divorce, um, lots of lots of different variables. So I've kind of experienced some of these things myself. And um, the first thing that I sort of did was put myself out there throughout lockdown, I guess, in some of these single moms groups and uh, offer my services. So I think we did. I think it was actually so good. We had such a good time. And I guess it would not just, I guess, in a financial perspective, but just being, I guess, able to interact with other people mm. throughout that period of time as well. I guess a lot of people were really isolated and there was lots of different scenarios and backgrounds and, yeah, people that we sort of dealt with. So we did, I think we did 40 consults over a few weeks' period. Too. Yeah. I was going to ask, how did you, like, I could see, like, you really lit up there about, you know, it's, it's like a you know, real real passion of yours. Yeah. How, how were you... How were you interacting with them during that time? Was it one on one? Like I could, I could see that, I could see that working. You like you do your one on one thing, but almost, almost like having a group of people together that have all gone through similar kind of events, and that that's more of a social sharing of stories thing rather than you're, you know, you're providing individual bespoke financial advice to people. But I could almost see that community building of people that have a shared experience, Not really. and and doing it in some type of group session. That off the back of that, maybe people come in as as individual uh, clients, but yeah, forty of them in a in the space of a couple of weeks. That, that would that would have kept you busy, but yeah, it was. But it was really good, and it was just it was not real sort of advice as such. It was more sort of putting tools available and handing tools out to people, such as I guess you know the Money Smart Budget Calculator and all of those mm-hmm. handy tools that are on there that you can just sort of get some structure and just have a look and, and assess. And I guess if there was an advice need, what is that advice need and can we book a future appointment? So it was it was really good and we just, yeah, it helped a lot of people, I think, as well, who were isolated too. So, yeah, fantastic. You know. and, and did many of those go on to become you know, fee-paying in some sense they you know, did. Cl- clients for you? Yeah. yeah, they've actually taken a couple on as ongoing clients as well. So we've, um, we've captured a few of those as well uh, through yep. things. And I, I feel that... See, even since that group and and giving those consults, I do get recommended a lot in a lot of the, I guess, local community. There's um, a Mornington Peninsula Mums page, which I'm lucky that I do get recommended a lot in there. And a lot of the advice that I do provide is to mums and families and whether single or, or, or couples or, you know, any kind of demographic. So I'm lucky in that regard that most of the business um, is word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, and I do get booked out, I guess, with with referrals in that way. Yeah, good on you. And so you're not you're not in you're not working from the the spare room at, at home anymore. You've no, you've no, got, you've got an we've office been there to now. Yeah. We've been to so we're we're in Somerville. We're in um, Aramosa Road East, which is one of the main sort of um, streets of Somerville in the shop front. So we've got a real office now, which is good. Yeah. Do you yeah. find like so? Is it is it like it's a shop front on a street, like with people walking past? Do you, do you find? I've spoken to others in the past where they've had other financial advisors have just had people literally just walking in the front door saying, "Hey, can you help me?" Like, does that happen? Is it like I'm in an office building in the city? It doesn't happen here, but no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it does happen here. We had um, we had an instance last week. Oh, sorry, two weeks ago. A poor gentleman. He just um, he was nearly in tears. Bless him. He came in off the street and um, downsized his home. Off he went to Centrelink to update them of his new retirement village address, and yeah. they chopped him off his edge pension. So. Yeah, and then we had to give him some advice around that too. So yeah, they do. They walk in the street and they can see our presence, which is really, really good. Yeah, We're very yeah, yeah. That, I like. Yeah. That. I, I often I you know, see you see empty shops for lease signs at different places, and I'll walk past them. I think, oh, that would like that would make such a good you know a good little office for a financial planning business for that. Like you're in the community, you've got the people walking past yes. the front door, It'd be long. and 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 be part of it. Yeah, oh, good on you. So. So what are your what are your plans from here? Do you have any grand plans for taking over the world? What do you what do you <laughs> what do you think's Not next? A, no, look, I I really don't know what's next. I'm sure there's going to be um, some decisions to make moving forward. And I've done a bit of work around, I guess, capacity and what your book looks like in terms of numbers and where to from here. So. Whether we keep it small or we venture out a bit bigger, I'm really not sure how that looks yet. Um, as it is, we're all kind of in the same boat. There's got to be a point where we think about these things and decisions that will be made. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people like it. Yeah, you get to you know have a chat with on the on the podcast here that, that get to that point. They say no. Some will say no. I just want to keep it small. It's just me and and, and a bit of help in the business or or others. And it's 
know, when do they take on that first that first advisor? Others talk about like just hiring in general, just hi- hire. Lots of people talk about hiring before you really think you can afford to to hire. Like if yeah. you if you really wait for the numbers to make sense, it's probably going to be too too late for you. Exactly, um, and I've, yeah, I think I've done that in some regard. I think that I have mm. hired before those numbers make sense, but I think um, we're kind of ready to hit the ground running now in terms of training and where we're at as a team and our processes. I think we've got that down pat. So now, now we can sort of make up the numbers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or reassess the book in some some degree. So, what is, so what does your engagement look like with these with these clients? Like, what what tools are you using? How you know how many meetings are you having with them? What, yep. What's that What's that engagement process look like? So usually we would charge an initial uh, consultation fee. Um, I find that I'm just so busy with appointments and people wanting to book in that I've kind of had to adapt that approach so that it kind of, it gets the clients that you really need in front of you to be in front of you. And it also, I guess, locks in. So how I kind of do it is um, a $280 fee for a 90-minute consult and then the fee will then be deducted from the advice cost if there is an advice need. So gotcha. it kind of locks that client in to coming back to see you as well rather than yep. shopping around. Um, so that's how we kind of uh, run things. That's the first. Uh, we'll do three free appointments. So the first appointment will be the consult, the 90 minutes where we kind of, we do have a, a lot of the fact finding in that appointment as well. So the second appointment from there, the real kind of your fact find um, meeting is just not as heavy because you've already done a lot of the work. So from there, we'll do research on funds or whatever needs to be done, I guess, in that initial appointment and then rebook them uh, for maybe two weeks after we've done research and, and got all yep. our figures together. So whether yep. that's budgeting or super research or whatever it may be. Uh, second appointment, we will do more of a risk uh, discussion. Mm-hmm. And then uh, from there, we'll book the plan presentation for two weeks. So it's usually... Usually, a sort of six-week process, start to end. Yep. And are you using any tools for like that that risk profiling discussion, or is it something from your licensee? Like, what are yeah, you what are you yeah, using? Yeah, it's there? usually licensee based. Uh, yeah. Finding sort of questionnaires. We do use X Plan as well, and I really should be getting better at technology and using uh, that technology in the appointment. But I don't know. I just you just have your set process, and I think that's that's the way you roll with it. My yeah. my technical tool that I use is my whiteboard. <laughs> yep. So yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the oh, the room I mean doesn't have one, but yeah, I'm a big fan of the whiteboard. The whiteboard function on Teams if we're using it. Yeah, and I'm I'm with you. I've only just recently got my head around to one of the one of the modeling tools in XPan. Like our power planners use the you know the the full I don't even know whatever the really complicated one is. I, that's just too too much for me. But um they were using lifestyle goals. Using life oh, using yes. lifestyle goals. Yeah, they're pretty with with clients and uh, and that's really helpful. So either in that first meeting or or at some point later on, even through the review process, I had a client the other day that was thinking, "Oh, can I can I can I afford to retire next year?" And I said, "Yes, you can." And then and then a few weeks later, he's like, "Oh, can I afford to retire next year, but also give my kids some money to help them buy houses?" I said, "Well, maybe not. Let's let's go through the yeah go through the modelling." And that was really helpful to be able to do that live. So yeah, I think you're not alone with uh with struggling with. Trying no, to use some of those modeling tools. And I really should get better as well as in, instead of handwriting things and making notes and printing out a physical copy of like a fact finding questionnaire to actually do it um, on my system. Like, yeah. That's so all there's others that, others that have been on the podcast that are using um, portals to, to, to get the clients yeah. to input a lot of that. And then it goes straight into X Plan so that they, um, and they, someone was on a little, little while back, he was talking about. He was trying to identify the, the bits, the real pain points for him, which is where work gets stuck. And he was saying, well, it's the bit that I really don't like doing. It's because work gets stuck there. Is, that's why it gets stuck there because I don't really like doing it. And it was like the data gathering fact finding. Just say so, well, he's built something to push it all onto the clients, which then speeds the whole thing up. Yeah. So your, so your SOAs, that you, your advice that you're delivering, is that um, is that like a the traditional statement of advice document? Have you tried this video thing that some people are doing. It's just the, the ordinary, older, older way that everyone's been doing it. Yeah. Still stuck in the dark edges in that regard. I would like to move forward with the whole video SOAs in the future. It looks good. The concept's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a bit of it here. Uh, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a blend. It's a bit of a blend to where there's a, probably a 20 to 25 page document, like a you know, kind of older SOA thing. It's just a whole lot more cut down and then, and then a recording of that meeting, presenting it, and and uh, the the two 
got sign off from our compliance, which um, yeah, we're finding our way through it. I wanted to um, spend a bit of time talking about your, your social media. So you you mentioned about the the Facebook groups and so forth being yes. being part of that. Whenever we start to talk about social media and using it from a marketing kind of branding perspective, people are like, "Oh, what am I going to post on LinkedIn? Or what am I going to post on Instagram?" And these kind of things. But I think one of the points that you made are just being part of the community groups. That's like an inadvertently in in that social media world. I'm sure lots of people have a Facebook page and they'll be part of the local community group or the car group because they're interested in a certain type of car or something like that. But yeah, that's that's a good starting point to just be part of the the, the community groups. Are you how how heavily involved in there? Are you jumping in there, commenting on things? Like what what are you what are you doing in yeah, those groups? Yeah, I'm in quite a lot of the community pages and it is time consuming, but it's quite it's quite good to get your presence out there as well. So um I'll give you an example. I don't know if you've seen the you know, the little book of scams that was um, put out there. I think I might have a copy that I could show you. Um, no. There's a little book of scams that's just been released recently. There's an older version, which is a couple of years old, but we've been on the forefront of kind of getting that out into the community as well. So we do we do sort of advertise in our local area. This We've got this available. It's good for, I guess, retirement villages, oldies that are not used to a lot of these scams that are out and about these days can kind of catch them off guard. So we've just sort of made that available to distribute, I guess, locally as well. So that's just one example. So, I mean, if we're just, I guess, trying to put ourselves out there in what we're doing here, and I guess on a on a day-by-day basis, we're quite, quite, quite big on, I guess, making sure that the community are aware of, I guess, interest rate hikes and what's going on in terms of legislation changes and if they need us, we're here. So we're just, we always have an open door policy that we are we are sort of approachable and we can speak to everybody if they've got mm. questions in that regard. And even, I guess, some of the Mornington Peninsula Moms pages and there's a lot of questions go up in there about finances as well and does anybody know anybody that can help with? So we've always got, I guess, good recommendations for different people and specialists in the local area too. Yep, yep. And so, and and what else are you doing in terms of that social media marketing piece? So like, I, is it, I'm, I know of your Instagram page and you've got- yeah. Uh, two and a half thousand or so, nearly three thousand followers on your Instagram page. So that that that's a nice number in itself. It is. But how are, are you managing that? Is someone in your team yeah. managing that? Like, what are you? We're managing how does that it in house. It's kind of a bit of all three of us, really. So Josh, Josh is the person that will jump on with articles on the website and sort of put his. Um, I guess a lot of the licensee articles that we're downloaded from our marketing team, we will keep on top of those and making sure the website's up to date. Um, the Facebook page is a combination of Gemma and myself, but Gemma's Gemma's really thrown herself into the role. I was obviously being younger and more technology focused that she is all over the Instagram um, accounts and yeah, the Facebook page as well, and just making sure that we're updating that regularly and holding ourselves accountable. Because I guess when you're busy, that's the thing. You just I think, oh gosh, social media is just one of those things that just gets pushed by the wayside. But it's one of the things that you really need to keep doing when you are yeah. busy because. It's, just sharing why you're busy and what you're doing, and and I guess it's it's hard as well to I guess in our world and what we do because a lot of it is confidential and you can't always share some of those things that we do do with clients. So it's it's good to get those testimonials. I feel yeah. that that's really a big thing for us too is to make sure that we're surveying our clients and making sure that we get those surveys done, which we've done a couple of times now, and the results have been really good. So if we can get those testimonials on the back of client surveys. That gives us another, I guess, oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. worth of social media posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, you mentioned the website. Like you, you know, you're, I was looking at your website before. It, like it, it, it's great. It's it's really appealing. Thank you. It's not just you know slabs of slabs of boring text. There's colours and videos and, and and things. I'm sure that you know, the people that built it help you build it. There would have been a, a bit of money involved in in having the website built. But then the important part is you mentioned you've got you've got your son there. Just keeping it. Keeping it fresh, I, I, yes. I find a lot of people go down to whether it's the website or their Instagram page, and they'll have this flurry of activity, and then they do nothing, and, and nothing. it just goes it. just goes silent. And I think that's almost worse than than maybe not having anything and not having anything at all. It is. It's, you need to just whether it's you're getting articles from your licensee that you're updating on your website, and just keep putting posts out on on the Instagram as you're doing, and scheduling them as well. You know, if you can schedule your posts for a certain time of day when the audience is there, you know, if they can hit the Instagram and the Facebook pages at six, seven o'clock at night when everyone's kind of scrolling on their phones, it's kind of 
just keeping you active. But again, I agree with you. You know, you're kind of questioning those people that do sort of bulk post and then nothing for six months. You're thinking, you know, where have they gone? Are they still around? Yeah. You yep. just got to keep yep. on top of it too. Keep so, it. so are you doing any? Are you doing anything? As you're doing any videos? Have you ventured into? No, I haven't yet. Recording yourself, I haven't, explaining I know some I need things. To. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know that I need to do that, and you do that really well. I kind of, um, I do Which follow, I, I, we do follow each other on Insta, but I yeah, do, yeah. I actually share with my guys. I go, oh, look how well James is doing this, and look at his. I use it as training a lot of bit, <laughs> with Gemma and Josh. So that's yeah, good. Just a bit of practice. So you do. So you got the Instagram page, Facebook. You seem yeah. like heavily involved in communities and things, and you got your yes. business business website. Uh, any other social channels that you're using? Is it just those I two? I use LinkedIn, probably not as often as I yep. should. I would like to get better at using LinkedIn, but it's really just Facebook and yeah, and Instagram. And I know that TikTok is a big one out there too for people. And I do hear that you've got a lot of followers on TikTok too. With mm. um, yeah, yeah, with things that yeah. you're. But I think like, it, I could, it's re- it's really just trying to find where where does your where does your uh, kind of client demographic? Where are they yes. hanging out? And and your you know if, if you're going to be part of the local community, it's a bit different you know, being in a, in the in the CBD. You know, I, everyone that works from works here comes from all over the place. I'm sure your you know your office is probably fairly close to where you live. Yes. Um, if you're going to be part of that, well, then the community groups are on Facebook, and so that's the place that's exactly place to right. be. And then the LinkedIn, sorry, the Instagram links up with that. Yeah. Um, and you know, the TikTok and LinkedIn, maybe not not so much. So you're trying to find that, identify where you are, where your audience is, more than anything. And yes, yeah, but on you keep posting there. Yep. Yes, yeah, but on. Yeah, very good. All right, well, Leah. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, thanks, really good Jeremy. to really good to speak with you. As I said, we've exchanged a few messages. Uh, interesting to hear that you're up. What you're up to. I really love that you've got your son in there. I said I said to my nine year old son the other day. I said, "Do you want a job? I need some help." He's like. No, <laughs> that right? maybe in a few years' time he might maybe he might be interested in doing it. No, yeah. you never know. Sometimes yeah. you've got to. Um, it is difficult sometimes when you're working, I guess, so closely and you live in the same house as well. Just to just be mindful of not bringing home to work and vice versa. But yeah, it works pretty well in general. And, yeah, I guess, and it'd be that hard part of you know when when the you know when someone that you work with has messed up something and you need to kind of. Tell them how you messed up and you need to deal with that. It's one thing to deal with that when it's someone that you work with, but if it's also your son, that then you're going to go home. You're going to go home and have dinner uh, at the dinner table. <laughs> so it, it <laughs> makes it even more challenging, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yep. Yep. Thank you, James. Right. It's Thanks, been Thank you for inviting Thanks me. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. Take Bye. care. Bye.